Welcome to sunny Mallorca. In this video I'm going to tell you how to go vegan, but before that let me show you where I am right now. It is about 22 degrees at 10 a.m. right now. I'm so excited to get some bait and maybe go for a swim. At the minute, I'm just finishing off cooking dinner. You'll see that right now. But yeah, as that stands, I'm going to make this video while that's cooking. So into the video, how to go vegan. I've been vegan for the past 18 months, and in that time I have helped friends go vegetarian and also vegan. So here are my top tips. I need to clarify though, that I did go vegan overnight, but as that's not feasible for most, these tips are going to apply to people making a longer transition. Firstly, you need to find your why. This step is so often overlooked, and it really shouldn't be, as it is essential to success. Your why is very different to everyone. It needs to be personal. For instance, if your why is overall health, then you will simply fail. It's not good enough because it's so broad and you have no personal connection with it. So let me give you a good example. You can have overall health as your basis for your why, but you need to know why you want overall health, what it means to you. For instance, you don't want to get diabetes or you want to lose some weight, etc. Try to imagine how you'll feel months from now and really feel it as if it's already here and now. Realize that by going vegan you allow your body to heal, get rid of a lot of toxins and ultimately transcend the ordinary folk. Reading books about such topics or watching documentaries such as Cowspiracy and Earthlings can really help keep you motivated and open your eyes to the the true horrors of the animal industry. Then when your why established, you need to make a plan on what you're going to do on a day-to-day -day basis. Forming or breaking a habit is said to take 21 days, so your plan needs to be that length of time. If your plan is crap, you're basically not going to go through with going vegan, so this is a crucial step. In this first three weeks, you still might consume milk, eggs, maybe even meat, but I need to tell you not to feel bad about it, it is okay. Just slowly replace them with alternatives such as soya milk and coconut based cheese. Because veganism is an evolution more than anything else. Let me repeat myself. The transition may be tough, with many temptations emerging, but you can fly through them. And in the start it's okay to take upon these, as long as you're progressing, as, as little changes make all the difference in the end. Getting into the food side of things. You're gonna need to know how to cook, there is no simple way around this. It doesn't have to be 5 star gourmet dishes, but such things as boiling pasta or steamed vegetables are just the basis of a vegan diet. I highly suggest researching new and exciting dishes for every one of these 21 days. They don't have to be completely different, but such things as mixing up the sauces or the toppings can help a lot, because new flavours excite you and make you want to continue. This is so important. As if you get stuck in the same thing as rice with sauce every single day, you kind of feel sick of it all and you're going to give up the whole diet. What I eat for my basic carbs include rice, grains such as groats, buckwheat, oats, pasta and potatoes. These form a base layer to most of my dishes. To add to these, I add vegetables and legumes. My favourites would be courgettes, peppers, broccoli, cauliflower, mushrooms, tomatoes, chickpeas and any kind of bean honestly. To pair with this diet, I also eat a lot of fruit, especially bananas, mangoes, pineapples, oranges and apples. A common misconception is that you need to eat a lot of pastry to make up for the carbs, but I personally don't like pastry at all and I stay away from it. So when I'm on the road I need to make a packed lunch, instead of having sandwiches I usually use Roy crackers, that's R-Y-E, or I make tortilla wraps which are basically flour and water. To make your foods have a nice punch, you're gonna want to add spices and herbs. They can turn your foods from something mediocre to extraordinary, full of life and flavour. My favourite spices will include basil, oregano, parsley, cinnamon, cumin, curry, chilli and garlic. I kind of mix these around depending on what dish I want and for who I'm cooking. For example, my family doesn't like chilli so I don't really add that when I'm making a family dish. A really handy tip is use vegetable stock as your base layer for a lot of sauces. This can add so much flavour and it's so simple to use. 
This next thing I'm often asked about, eating out. Nowadays in 2017, most restaurants will make you vegan dishes on request, even if it's not on the menu. Like being here in Mallorca where most people like their fish, there's restaurants serving vegan, vegan pasta dishes, vegan pizzas, and other vegan delicious treats. So if you're worried about a restaurant not having a vegan dish, there's no need to worry. But then there's the one trouble that I kind of run into still. That's when you're with family and friends and they're eating nice desserts such as ice creams and cakes. You can't really make these vegan on the spot. But what I suggest is going home and buying some sorbet which is kind of like ice cream but instead of milk they use ice. And for cakes, you can just bake any cake yourself. And it's really simple to replace the eggs and milk in these bakes. I guess what I'm trying to say is that there's a way around every single dish. One thing that I need to mention is that most people give up on this diet because they have no energy or are too tired. I hate to break it to you this abrupt way, but you're just not eating enough. There's, <laughs> it's simple as that. You see, on a vegan diet, you eat a lot of whole nutrient dense foods and these fill you up a lot more quickly than anything that you may be used to. Let me give you one example. 100, 100 grams of broccoli has 34 calories. Then 100 grams of your basic cereal, just on the shelf stuff, has 380 calories. So if you're starting to feel a bit tired on this diet, try and increase your calorie content. And, and if this is hard because you're just constantly filled up, eat nuts or use oils. I personally love using linen oil and avocado oil on all my salads. Oh yeah, prior to going vegan, you also might worry about protein. This is a pretty funny thing to someone who has been vegan for over a year. Because 100 grams of chicken breast, which is regarded as one of the highest in protein, has only 21 grams of protein. Then 100 grams of soya fillets have 51 grams of protein. 51. This is insane. It's not just soy exclusive. Every single vegetable has some amount of protein in it. As long as you're eating your whole vegetables daily, there is no need to worry at all. Like, like I've built muscle no problem while staying on a vegan diet. This next problem addresses people who are addicted to the stringy texture of cheese or that chicken breast feeling. Most supermarkets nowadays, such as Tesco, Little Ali, have a free from all. Now, this is normally meat-free, dairy-free, gluten-free, etc. And you can find vegetable alternatives to such things as burgers, steaks, even cheeses. I personally stay away from these as these can be chemically made. But honestly, a lot of the cheeses are pretty damn good. They use the coconut oil as a base layer and kind of add herbs to make the flavor rich. A really nice thing as well is IKEA vegetable meatballs. These are so gorgeous and they only take 3 minutes to make in the microwave. Then for your milks, there is so many options. You have soya milk, which I, which I love, cashew milk, almond milk, rice milk, oat milk, and chocolate milks and all of them. And then there are soya fillets. I've actually made a video on these linked down below. They basically require some mediocre preparation, but have the same texture and feel as chicken does. It's incredible, especially if you love your curries or things with chicken and just can't let go of that feeling. Then there is one more thing I need to address and that's feeling crap on a vegan diet. The truth is that being vegan will not make you healthy. You still need to reduce your fats, all your junk food to minimal. I personally only eat sesame seed bears which are rather healthy I guess and dark chocolate. Going vegan is not just all about the food, it's a big master transition. So, I suggest that you join vegan Facebook groups such as UK Vegan and also read online forums. These are filled with people just waiting to give you advice, motivation and support. I also follow a lot of vegan fitness people on YouTube. These include Matt Kama 2, Timothy, Mike the Vegan and Raw Alignment. Once you finally do go vegan, you're going to see incredible results. Firstly, your initial potential food struggles will start to dissipate and choosing vegan options will be second nature to you. You're just going to grab that banana instead of grabbing those sweets. Then there's also the negative side of things where your family and friends may not support you. I've had to go through this myself and I still do occasionally. I urge you to try and refrain from forcing anyone to change. 
Of course, it can be activists on your own right, but do it peacefully by educating people on what the vegan diet consists of and, and why it is so beneficial. Nobody likes opinions being forced upon them, so educate and not dictate. Thank you for watching this quite long video, but I hope it has helped someone at least. And till next time.